Hey everyone, welcome to Convoy's ongoing analysis of the freight market during the COVID-19 crisis. We're recording this video on the night of Monday, March 30th. I'm Ari Bixhorn from the Convoy team and joining me today is Aaron Tarazas, our Director of Economic Research. Aaron, welcome. Hi Ari. Aaron, things continue to evolve rapidly on a day-to-day -day basis, both for the American economy and for the freight industry. As a result, I think a lot of the focus and coverage has been on the immediate term impact of the situation. What do you think the longer term impact is going to be? Yeah, I mean, um, obviously we are in this period of extreme unknown and, and the reality is no one really knows what the long term impact is going to be. We can try to, to look at some past historical experiences and see how, how those evolved, what people were thinking in the moment. How did things ultimately end up? And we can try to learn from those experiences. So, you know, something that comes to my mind, for example, is if you take the oil price surge of the early 1970s, that was a, an enormous shock to the American economy. In some ways, it prompted dramatic changes. And in other ways, things continued largely the same. So, you know, it, it did kind of shift Americans' auto purchases towards smaller, more fuel efficient vehicles. It gave a new opening for the Japanese and, and European automakers that, that specializes in those types of cars. At the same time, you know, you think about the, the auto industry in the 1980s and 1990s, and there was a surge of SUV and light truck demand. So the oil shock certainly came in a moment. It, it, it kind of hit when environmental awareness was on Americans' consciousness after the 1960s. And so it, it certainly did change things on the margin, but in, in other ways, things things continued and, and a lot of consumer preferences did revert back to what they were beforehand. So if you think about how this is likely to evolve, again, no one knows, but, but some things will continue, some things will be different. You know, a more recent crisis that comes to mind is the housing crash of 2008. That obviously led to the last recession. What were the lasting impacts of that? Yeah, I mean, the, the housing crash back in 2007, 2008, you know, really prompted enormous introspection in the real estate industry. Were young adults who came of age during that period going to want to become uh, homeowners or were they going to, you know, rent and become urban renters for a longer period? And if you look at how U.S. real estate has played out over the past decade since that crash, certainly young adults did kind of rent for longer than, than previous generations. But ultimately, they, many of them did kind of repeat the same patterns of prior generations as well. So the homeownership rate did remain lower for a long time, but you know, is now for the past two or three years has been back at its levels from, from the late 1990s pre-bubble levels. Um, many of the young adults who delayed homeownership delayed many other kind of major life decisions. But once they started making those major life decisions, Many of them did kind of ultimately buy suburban homes in the same model uh, of, of prior generations. So again, like, like the oil crash of the, the 1970s, it's a similar story. Kind of some things shift around the margins, but, but ultimately consumer preferences do change. Now, it's not universal. You look at kind of the, the so-called depression babies of the 1930s. Um, many of them had lasting changes in consumer preferences. Uh, so, you know, it's, it's, it's never kind of definitive. But the, the past two crises of the 1970s and, and 2000s, shifts are in the margins, continuity in the long term. And in both of those more recent scenarios, the housing crisis and the shift in the automotive industry, basically what we saw there was an acceleration of changes that were already underway. When it comes to the freight industry and what we're currently facing, are there analogous trends that, that might accelerate? The first one that comes to my mind is the diversification of supply chains. So you think about um, this newfound awareness that many manufacturers, many companies have come to that, you know, concentrating their supply chains um, carries enormous risk. This is a change that was already underway pre-crisis. Um, it really started to, to bubble up after the trade war. I know I, I recently saw a McKinsey survey that showed that the number of CEOs and business leaders who are thinking about uh, diversifying their supply, supply chains has increased pretty sharply if you look at December just even to March during the early days of this crisis. So that's, I think, something that's going to continue. It was already underweight in, in many respects. There are other shifts that, you know, perhaps will be, be less durable. You think about the shift um, over the past three or four weeks in, in how and where Americans eat away from, from restaurants, 
toward, toward more at-home groceries. Um, obviously, that has enormous implications for freight demand just because of the way that restaurants get stocked up on their food and the types of trucks that deliver those, or the types of service that deliver those are very different from the types of trucks and services that, that restock grocery stores. That shift over the past three weeks um, comes on the heels of a decade when restaurant spending has just been on a tear. If you look at uh, restaurant sales per capita over the past decade since the end of the, um, the financial crisis, they've increased twice at twice the rate of, of regular grocery store sales per capita. So much larger increase in restaurant spending than in grocery spending. It's, it's hard to imagine that you know, once Americans are able to go outside again and, and, and eat out, um, that this trend toward, toward grocery spending um, will, you know, at least in, in, in total, uh, continue. So I, I imagine there'll be likely be some some uh, quite a bit of reversion there. So it, sort of similar to what we've seen in the past, uh, some of the trends that are already underway are likely to accelerate. While if we look at the changes that have sort of been in immediate reaction to the crisis, those may not be as long lived. Yeah, no, that, that's entirely reasonable. Yeah. All right. Well, Aaron, thank you, as always, for your time and your analysis. And to everyone watching, thank you for tuning in. Aaron and I will continue to provide updates on the coronavirus and the freight industry. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and the Convoy blog to stay informed. We'll see you next time.